So it's a Tuesday morning, and Clarice is trying to make her way to an interview. This is 6 a.m. in the morning. And she's trying to make, like most of us, she lives on one side of town, and the interview is on the other side of town. So it typically takes her 15 minutes to get to town. But on this particular day, it is insane. It takes her two hours just to get to town. You see, this is not a typical day. The Israeli prime minister is in town, roads are closed, it's raining, traffic is insane. She eventually decides to get onto a motorbike just so she can make it to the interview. It takes her two and a half hours to make it to the interview. She gets there just five minutes before the interview starts. For those of us who have lived in Nairobi know that two and a half hours in traffic in Nairobi is quite impressive. <laughs> this is the nature of urban transportation in our cities today. Cities are congested. Transportation is a mess, it's inefficient. It costs a lot as well. It also takes a lot of time. Today, for example, they're going to sit in traffic for 70 minutes. Think about a typical week. You spend eight hours just sitting in traffic. This is the same thing as taking a day off work just to sit in traffic. <laughs> Let me take you back to where all of this began. So it's 1963. We've just gotten our independence from the British. Everyone is super, super excited um, about, about the future of Kenya. We are all very optimistic, right? And there's all these job opportunities happening in the city. So naturally, people are moving into the cities. So you have this ex population explosion into the city. And because the government wanted to make um, transportation easy for the city, so they make investment into buses. So you have these huge buses with a fixed schedule moving around from very fixed bus stops. If the bus leaves at 9 a.m., it's going to leave at 9 a.m. So you have to play by that. And it made sense then, because our cities were simple. Transportation was very, Nairobi only had a couple of streets on it, right? The settlement pattern was extremely simple. So it made sense to have these buses. But with time, it wasn't making sense anymore. There needed to be some sort of flexibility in how people were picked up, where they were dropped off, the times they were being picked up. You needed some sort of flexibility. And us being the very innovative people we are, we came up with matatus. But even you and I know that matatus are not the solution they brought on a couple of other problems as well. That's a typical matatu that you can see on the screen behind me, right? Matatus have created a few other problems. Let's think about Nairobi CBD, for example. This is a block of land that's just one and a half square kilometers. Every single day, you have millions of trips coming to town and then completing the second leg out of town. So a typical trip today has two legs, one into town, another one out of town. All these millions of trips are processed in a block of land that's barely one and a half square kilometers of land. That is the problem with matatus that we have today. So there has to be a way out of this. I come from a ride-hailing background, the applications that we all love to use. You take out your phone, request for a car, three minutes, there's a car right outside your door, picks you up, takes you to a destination. In the last three years in ride-hailing, I've taught me a couple of lessons. So here today, I'll just share with you three of those lessons. The first of those is sharing is caring. And for transportation, it goes a little further. So it's not, just, it's not only caring, it's also cheaper. If you sample cars in Nairobi traffic today, you'd observe a couple of very interesting things. For every single public service vehicle, there are four other private vehicles. And each of these private vehicles has only one single occupant inside the car. So you have yourself, you have your neighbor, you have your other neighbor, you have your other other neighbor, all sitting in single cars heading in the same destination. We can make things easier. And with the data that we have today, we can match you with five other people heading in the same direction and with your schedule. So we make transportation cheaper. You share the cost of maintaining the car, the cost of fuel, the cost of everything to do with the car. It becomes cheaper. The future means put, putting more people into fewer cars. And that's just one. The second lesson is efficient use of the resources that we already have. Every single day or every single year, Governments are investing tons of money into infrastructure. They're either planning to invest tons of money or they're already doing, they're already making all these investments into infrastructure. Think about Clarice. So if Clarice only had to take out her phone, open an application, and from that application access thousands of the matatus running around in the city today, right? Think about that. Takes out her phone and accesses all these matatus running around in the city. The reason why I say this is this. Based on the data that we already have right now, we know where Clarice works. We know where Clarice shops, where she lives, what time she goes to work, the route she prefers to take to work. We have all this information. At the same time, you have these thousands of matatus which have very inoptimized ways of moving around the city. 
seems like there can be a marriage here. We know how this person operates, and we have these thousands of matatus that are very inefficient. Just by adding an extra layer of data, based on how Clarice goes about her day, we can bring about efficiency into the matatu industry. So I'm talking about Clarice pulls out her phone, and we know where she's heading, where, she, where she's coming from, and then matching that with an open minibus, and then matching that with 10 other people who are heading in the same direction. Brings down the cost of transportation. It means that there's less downtime for the matatu as well, which means the cost of transportation goes down, the matatu owners make a lot more. Which brings us to my last lesson, which is big is good. Now, we have, now that we have solved Clarissa's problem, there's a lot more people that need, there's a lot more problems that we need to solve as well. So think about the same way Clarissa is using the application to access the existing mode of transportation. Think about us opening this up to a lot more people. Think about hundreds of thousands of people doing the same thing. So instead of us keeping the rigid, solid uh, bus stops that we have right now, think about virtual bus stops. So Clarissa doesn't have to walk to a bus stop anymore. She just walks 100 meters and my tattoo picks her up and then it drops 100 meters from where. These are virtual bus stops because we know the route she uses, we know the time she goes to work, we know everything about her. And then open this up to hundreds of thousands of people within Nairobi. And she doesn't even have to pay by cash for her trip because the thing is, she has subscribed to transportation. So she pays for it in pretty much the same way you pay for Netflix, mobility as a service. In summary, just by adding an extra layer of data to how people go about their day, how people work, how they go to work, what they prefer to do. Adding that with the existing modes of transportation, these two things can work very well together. And by this, by adding extra layer of data to existing transportation, you can move a lot more people faster, simpler, more efficient, and cheaper. Thank you. <laughs>